Phoenix Knight here. Welcome to the channel, and welcome back to our playthrough of Arkham Horror, the card game, where we're playing through the Dream Eaters campaign. In this video, we're going to upgrade the decks again. From their search for Kadath, Lola and Harvey picked up six experience, and from A Thousand Shapes of Horror, Jenny and Ursula picked up seven experience, but Jenny has eight experience to spend since we left one floating from their last from the last batch of upgrades. Speaking of Jenny, Let's start this upgrade episode with the Waking Investigators in general, and with Jenny in particular. Hello, Jenny. With your 8 experience, we're only making 2 upgrades, but I hope they'll be 2 big upgrades. First up, for 4 experience, we're going to swap out one of your 45 Thompsons for a copy of... For a Beretta M19, so let's take a look at this Beretta M19 that we're bringing into the deck. So for experience, four cost to play, two combat and an agility on commit, uses four ammo. As an action, exhaust Beretta M1918 and spend an ammo fight. You get plus four combat and deal plus one damage for this attack. If you succeed by two or more, either ready Beretta M1918 or this attack deals plus one deals an additional plus one damage. If you succeed by four or more, do both. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna start augmenting Jenny's firepower a little bit more. And then for the other four experience, we're actually going to upgrade one of your copies of Hard Knocks to the level straight to the level four version. So here's the level four version of Hard Knocks. Two cost to play, two combat, two agility on commit, uses two resources. Replenish these resources at the start of each round, so you basically get two resources for free to use. Spend as a reaction, spend, in a, spend one resource from your resource pool or from hard knocks. You get plus one agility or plus one combat for this skill test. So, yeah, the free resources there will come in very handy on hard knocks when we need to make big skill tests. But anyway... That was nice and quick for Jenny. Now let's go pay Ursula a visit. Ursula, as we saw last week in A Thousand Shapes of Horror, you are quite the speed demon. Moving into the second half of Dream Eaters, mobility will count even more than it already has, so let's strengthen your mobility. First thing we're going to do is we're going to upgrade both of your shortcuts to level 2. So let's take a look at shortcut level 2. So 2 costs... Two experience to put in the deck, one resource to play. Get a will, a lore, and an agility on test. Fast, play only during your turn. Attach to your location. Attached location gains reaction, exhaust shortcut, move to a connecting location. So we're going to swap both of the shortcuts in the deck that are, they're both level zero right now. But we're going to swap them out into the level two version. So there's that done. And we're also going to take both of our copies of Inquiring Mind out of the deck, and we're going to swap in Pathfinders. So here's, a, so here's our first look at Pathfinder. So three costs to play, one agility on commit, one experience to put in the deck, so that's going to bring up to, us up to six experience that we've spent. As a reaction, during your turn, if you are not engaged with any enemies, exhaust Pathfinder, move to a connecting location. Searchers after horror haunt strange, far places. H.P. Lovecraft, The Picture in the House. So again, our goal in the, with these upgrades is to strengthen Ursula's mobility. We saw she can move very fast in the last scenario, so we want to amplify that as much as we can. And then we're going to swap out one of her magnifying glasses for her last experience. We're going to bring in a copy of Death 13. So it's a three cost to play, death 13, free from the past. You get plus one lore when the game, and as, a, as a reaction, when the game begins, if death 13 is in your opening hand, put it into play, let go, and embrace a new truth. So we might end up having to mulligan hard for that just because we want to be able to start with that in our opening hand so we'll be able to put it into play for free. But... That's, but unlike with Jenny, we don't have any experience floating from that, so that'll do it for Ursula. We're also finished with the Waking Investigators. Now let's go pay a visit to the Dreamers, and we'll say hello first to Harvey Walters. Mm -hmm. 
Hello Harvey, we're actually not going to make too many changes to his deck this time around. We're just going to upgrade one of his cards to a permanent card and add another permanent card. So as you've seen over the course of the campaign, you've seen, you might have noticed that, I'm, that I do have some cards in, my, in play areas at the start of the game. Those are permanent cards. So you start with them in play and they can never leave play for any reason. So that's how permanent cards work. But anyway, let's take a, take a look at the card that's being upgraded to a permanent version. Higher Education, level 3. So it's basically the same... So the level 3 version gains the permanent keyword, and it has the same 5 or more cards in your hand condition, but instead on the level 0 version, where you only get plus 1 lore or will, now you also get plus 2, so it's a very powerful card. So we're adding that to the deck. Then we're also going to add a copy of Studious to the deck, which is another permanent card. So Studious, you see it's a 3 cost, another permanent. You begin each game with one additional card in your opening hand. Possibly Gilman ought not, ought not to have studied so hard. H.P. Lovecraft, The Dreams in the Witch House. Now, these two, these two kind of combo together, because granted, higher education is normally active already when you have five cards in hand to start with. Studious just gives you a little more cushion to play something, and then higher education is still active. So, that's how that those go together. Now, by replacing that higher education level zero with a permanent version, we actually are down below our deck size. So, per deck building rules, we are allowed to add a level zero card to bring us back up to that legal, to a legal deck size. So, the card we're going to add is actually going to be a card called Occult Lexicon. So we'll take a quick look at Occult Lexicon. Two cost to play, lore on commit, limit one per deck. Forced, after Occult Lexicon enters play, search your bonded cards for three copies of Blood Rite, add one to your hand and shuffle the other two into your deck. When Occult Lexicon leaves play, find each of these copies of Blood Rite, even if they're out of play, and remove them from the game. So, so we're adding another tome to Harvey's arsenal. But let's take a quick look at Blood Rite. So we're at, so we get three of these when Occult Lexicon enters play. Zero cost to play, will, lore, and combat on commit, bonded with Occult Lexicon. Draw two cards, discard up to two cards from your hand. For each card thusly discarded, you may either gain one resource or spend one resource to deal one damage to an enemy at your location. This action does not provoke attacks of opportunity. So that'll just give us more options if we need to, in case we need to kill something at at heart at, of the location. And Lola is proving not up to the task of doing that. But anyway, that will do it for Harvey. Speaking of Lola, she's last on the on the upgrade battery. Lola, like I mentioned in the last upgrades video, whatever we didn't do in that video, we were going to do here. This batch of upgrades is going to be focused on combat. First up, we're going to swap out the leather coat with a bandolier level 2. So let's take a quick look at that. Bandolier, 2 cost to play. You get a will and a combat on commit. You have two additional hand slots which can only be used to hold weapon assets. While you have weapon assets held in two or more hand slots, you get plus one will. One health on soak and it takes the body slot. So we're essentially swapping one body slot out for another. So that's helpful there. Next up, we're going to swap one of your level 0 Vicious Blows for a level 2 Vicious Blow. So it's, it'll be similar to Deduction. To, to uh, Combat on Commit, if you're successful, you deal plus 1 damage, plus 2 damage if you succeed by 2 or more instead. So, so basically, Deduction is to Clues, as Vicious Blow is to Damage. So there's a level 2 Vicious Blow in. Next up, we're going to swap out... Our last two upgrades are also going to be Guardian upgrades. So we're going to swap out the True Grit for a copy of a one experience weapon called the Hungering Blade. So it's a three cost to play one experience. Limit one per deck. As an additional cost to put this card into play, you must search your bonded cards for three copies of Bloodlust and shuffle them into your deck. Fight. You get plus one combat for each for this attack for each copy of Bloodlust. This attack deals plus one damage. If this attack defeats an enemy, place one resource on this card from the token bank as an offering. 
So we'll go ahead and add that in. And then we'll take a look at Bloodlust. Bloodlust, bonded with the Hungering Blade. Revelation, remove two offerings from the Hungering Blade to attach Bloodlust to it. If you can't, take one horror and shuffle, shuffle Bloodlust back into your deck. As a reaction, when it's, while attacking with the Hungering Blade, shuffle Bloodlust into your deck. You deal plus one damage for this attack, max once per attack. And we're putting three of those in the, and we're, we're putting three of those into our bonded cards. So we'll have to be careful. We'll have to make sure Lola is able to handle combat. If she can't, or this proves to be a liability, this is probably something that's going to end up getting cut at the last batch of upgrades. But our last card for the for this batch of upgrades, we're going to swap out her Lone Wolf for a copy of Ace of Swords. So Ace of Swords is another another tarot. This is the Guardian Tarot. One combat, you get plus one combat as a static boost. As a reaction, when, this game, when the game begins, if Ace of Swords is in your opening hand, put it into play. Cut to the heart of the matter. Nice and simple. So that will do it for the Dreaming Investigators, and in fact, all of them. So I'll get this. go ahead and get this Lone Wolf unsleeved and put Ace of Swords in. Then we'll move back up top, and we'll wrap up this video. Here we are with all four of our investigators. Upgrades are all finished, so later this week, actually this weekend, Lola and Harvey are going to head into their third scenario of the campaign, Dark Side of the Moon. Thank you for watching this video. Do give the video a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Again, welcome to the new subscribers. Your support is appreciated. Be well, stay safe, take care of yourselves and your loved ones, and I'll be back with more videos in the future. Until then, take care, everyone.